Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11 and verses 27 to 29. Let's double check that. All right, my Bible doesn't seem to want to come up this morning. Yeah. 27 to 29. Yeah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name above all names. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you thanks for yet another morning that you have allowed us to wake up. And we thank you for not just this morning, but every single morning up to this point that you have allowed us to wake up. Because it's just because of you that we are sustained, our breath is in our lungs. And for this sake, we want to give you thanks with every inhale, well, exhale or inhale, inhale, inhalation of our breath. And dear Lord, I just want to pray that you continue to renew our minds and our hearts. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. So that we can walk in the way that we ought to be going, pleasing you with this mortal life of ours. Lord, forgive us of our sins, known and unknown, things left done and left undone. And teach us and cause us to forgive those who have done wrong against us, dear Lord. Because your word said, if we do not forgive, you shall not forgive us. And it makes sense. Why would you forgive us? when we are not able to forgive those who trespassed against us. So dear Lord, just teach us and continue with us. Our, fall, our shortfalls also, dear Lord, I just pray that you help us with these things, that we may continue to persevere in the life that you have purpose for us to live through you, Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to instruct us in righteousness by your word and lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. And I just pray, as always, that you help each and every one of us of the body, that we are not taken away with this world, but we persevere until the end, especially those who are up against it. And we know that the whole world is at odds with those who believe on you, because the whole world is in the camp of the enemy. But we pray that we continue to show the light of Christ, so that those who may see it and hear of it may come unto the side of our Heavenly Father through and by our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to guide our children in the way of truth, in the way of peace also, dear Lord, so when they are of age, they shall not forget nor depart. And I just pray that you lead us in spirit and in truth in your word this morning. Let us not lean on our own understanding, but be edified by your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Okay. Let's just get that off there. So, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11 says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. And verse 27 to 29. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Cool. All right. Um, this is a psalm of David. Um, and interestingly, the, the when they were writing the book of Chronicles, they actually stated um, or wrote a Psalm of David here, and it actually just showed you the setup of it, showed you how um, it spoke about Asaph, the chief, and then it spoke about the other ones and the instruments. So it was like a band, like David have a little band there offering up worship to God, and it's it's quite nice to read it because sometimes you read the psalms and you don't see the setup to it. You just know the psalm in it. Unless you go back into the into the um the accounts, you you can't remember what led up to David writing that psalm. 
So this psalm here was a psalm of thanksgiving. Um, I just have a little title on the top of my Bible there. And it is it is a psalm of, if you re actually read it, read all of it, it is a psalm of thanksgiving. And I just briefly just skip back in, in the book of Chronicles just to see what was leading up to this point. And I think verse, the, chapter, the chapters before just spoke about David being confirmed as king. He defeated the Philistines. He acknowledged the men who stayed and helped him. Because we know that at one point Saul, the, uh, the king before him, was trying to kill him. And there was a few men that broke off and followed David. King David, right? And yeah, it said here, it's, it's, it, um, it defeated the Philistines twice and the ark brought to Zion. So... You see that there was a lot of victory going on in David's life at this point. But bear in mind before that David was heavily persecuted by um, Saul, King Saul. Saul was there persecuting David for no reason, right? Just because of jealousy and hatred, right? But David didn't give up. He persevered and um, he never gave up or, or forget that God had anointed him as king. And he didn't rush the thing. He didn't rush, right? He didn't say, oh, the Lord anoint me as king. Let me just kick out Saul or let me kill Saul or anything like that. No, he acknowledged that Saul was still anointed of God. And he waited for God to take Saul out the way so that he could be glorified as the king of a righteous king of God, right? And um, yeah, we know the story of David. But as I said, well, I should not assume. You can read up on the story of David. But just in this present time here. Um, yeah, David was rejoicing. He was actually rejoicing. They were bringing up the ark to Zion. Right? And we know that the ark was the ark of the covenant. And they reverence this because this was the ark that was instructed to be made. Right? Moses was instructed to make this ark and this ark held the covenant which the Lord had between him and his people Israel so as David spoke here we can learn from him and it speaks about seeking the Lord and his strength and seek his face continually and um, this is the one version says seek his presence continually right and this goes to show you the kind of intimacy and relationship we should have with our God, right? If he, if we as the church is considered his bride, his wife, right? As the church, the body, right? And he is the, 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 the good bridegroom, right? The, the, the one that is, is the owner of the, um, the bride, right? And whose the bride is. Then we, we ought to be honoring him we ought to be not bringing him grief we sh should not be stepping out on him with adultery and fornication or any such thing we should be reverencing him and we should be seeking him right we should be looking to him in everything right we know that nowadays marriage is 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 painted in a very misconstrued um way because people just don't honor it as it ought to be honored um uh, as a mm, let me not say in general because i don't know everybody in the world but what is portrayed in the on the on the on the portrayed mostly is that marriage is just whatever right and it's not the case right it's to marriage was always there to signify and, and to glorify god right and as we said david just spoke about seeking the lord face there because this is what how we ought to be in in continual and and perpetual relations with god right we ought to be seeking him we ought to be leaning on him for his protection for his strength and we should be honoring and glorifying him in all our ways right and um verses 27 to 29 again just speaking about we yes god is our strength but we should be giving our strength unto him we should be using our mortal strength and all our desires or all our, our intent to glorify him and somebody might say but that sounds selfish jelani why what why i can't do it for myself or why can't i do something for myself 
and that, that's where I always re remind everyone that there is nothing good outside what God has for us, right? God is good and he has the perfect good will for our lives if we allow him to reign in our hearts and if we follow him through and by our Lord Jesus Christ. So as again, our strength, right? We work earnestly as to the Lord and not to men. We give our strength, our glo the glory and honor and praise unto him because he is worthy to be praised. He is the deliverer. He is our salvation. He is our king. He is our strength. And um, yes, we glorify his name because of this, right? And we worship him because he is worship. He's worthy to be worshipped and praised. So... Yeah, just a little quick one here. It's a nice little psalm though. Read it for yourself. Um, any questions, anything that you want to send in, send in to the word at eachreach1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me and taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. So have a blessed morning and day, everyone. A productive day, a safe day. And God's willing, we'll catch up tomorrow.